So there's a lot of misconceptions around uh, the different types of investment properties uh, when it comes to real estate. And so what I wanted to uh, clarify is, is a lot of people paint a rosy picture around all the different types of properties and they don't talk a lot about what you need to consider. So for example, if you're thinking about investing into real estate and, and more importantly, into one of or two of the types of options, there's obviously a lot of benefits and we know them all and I'm going to go through that as well. But you always, always want to make sure that before you sign on that dotted line or get yourself tied up into a property, you've really taken the time to consider some of the, you know, essentially the disadvantages of, of, of each property. So let's go down the most common types of investment properties. We have generally what we do with our investors when we sit down with someone, obviously first finding out what type of capital they have unregistered, meaning not like RSP funds. Once we figure out how much they have and what they want to invest, we'll go down uh, some passive investments as well as what we call active investments. So let's start off with pre-construction condos. So Pre-construction condo investing, um, from from the perspective of uh, uh, the benefits of it, you're you're purchasing a condo. Generally, what we like to talk about when uh, you're investing into pre-construction uh, condo investing is buy somewhere in the downtown core. So, for example, in Toronto, buy in and around, like right in the core if you can, or something along the transit lines. Why? Because you just know there's always going to be a need from a tenant's perspective, because uh, most tenants now are not driving. They're going to they obviously want to be along the transit line. And what we've seen history being our teacher is that when you're purchasing in and around uh, transit lines, the value, the appreciation of your uh, of your condo is always going to be higher, as well as the rent you're going to be able to get from the tenant is going to be higher. So you're purchasing a pre-construction condo um, generally uh, in a place, again, where we know there's going to be a lot of tenants. You're purchasing also in an area where where the values have increased. So for again, for example, in Toronto, we know that there's 100,000 people coming into the greater Toronto area for uh, over the next 10 years. So we're going to have a, a little over a million people from outside of Canada come into Toronto, okay, into the greater Toronto area. That's, again, outside of the country. Net migration within the country is slated to be in and around 250 to 300,000. When you're buying a pre-construction condo, you're purchasing in today's value, maybe with a little bit of a bump for a building that's going to be built out two and a half to three years from now. The nice thing with it is that the deposit structure is extended. So in any other type of investment, you'll have to do a 20% down because you're an investor, but that all has to be due on closing, which is generally 60 to 90 days. With pre-construction, your deposit, that down payment, it's extended, right? So Generally, it's 10% within the first year. So if we take in an average, say, $500,000 condo, uh, your full down payment is going to be $100,000, 20% of the $500,000, and that's going to be extended over the two, two to two and a half year period, sometimes even three years. First year down is going to be 50000 So what that allows you to do is be flexible with your capital and invest into other types of investment or keep it under your mattress. That's probably not the best idea because you're not earning any interest, but you're able to invest into short-term mortgages. You're able to um, invest into land development deals. You can essentially get flexible, right? And so with the other uh, 10%, that is due over the second year or even third year. So you don't have to come up with that full down payment all at once. The other thing with the pre-construction condo is, is that it's very, very passive. What I like to say is that it's actually really boring. It's almost like watching paint dry because you're not doing anything. You're just writing those checks for the two uh, to three year period of time. Now, here's where not a lot of people talk about what you need to consider. Once once you sign on the dotted line, you now have uh, a 10 day cooling period in the, the, the uh, it's, it's actually essentially written into the contract where you can make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. 
After the 10 days, though, you're tied up. So if you give a deposit of 5%, which is usually the deposit, well, you'd give like a $5,000 uh, check, but then within 30 days, you have to do a 5,000, uh, sorry, 5% uh, deposit. That's it. It's tied up. You can't get out. So there's no way out after that 10 day cooling period. So if you, A, you change your mind because you got cold feet or B, if for example, um, let's just say you're not going to be able to get the financing. And, and so now you're tied up, you have, there's no way out. So that's definitely something that you need to consider. Another thing that you need to consider when it comes to pre-construction condos is the fact that you never got to touch, see, and smell it. Because you're buying from a floor plan, right? You're you're not you're essentially buying from a blueprint. And if you haven't heard one of our episodes on our podcast, go back. It was season one, uh, buying from a blueprint, where we really went through the, the the fact that again, you cannot get a get out of the deal, but b you're not going to be able to walk through the property. So that's pretty much when it comes to pre-construction condo, the benefits and the things to consider. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the, the, the next investment property that we see a lot of investors invest into is income properties. And I like to break up income properties to, into two segments, A being a resale condo. So what's a resale condo? A resale condo is something that's already on the market. What's some of the benefits? You can walk through it, touch, see, and smell it. When you purchase it, the the day that you close, you can get a tenant in there. If the sometimes you can actually what we call like is adopt the tenant. But what you're able to do is have principal recapture, meaning your mortgage being paid down. That starts right away. Because if your closing date is 60 to 90 days out, you're 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 having your principal paid down from day one. So remember, when on, on, on the pre-construction side, you don't have that. In the resale side, you definitely are able to uh, rent it out the day of closing. Now, what do you need to consider when you're investing into a resale condo? Well, one thing is, is that you're going to have to come up with that full 20% down payment within 60 to 90 days. You also don't have the uh, same amount of appreciation that you would for a pre-construction condo. So for example, when you're moving into, when you're getting into a resale condo, you're purchasing it in today's market value. There hasn't been any time like there was in pre-construction because the, the, you're going to have, when it comes to pre-construction condos, you still have that, that growth time for, while the building gets built. On resale, once you close, you're buying it at market value and you're giving that full down payment of 20% all at once. The second segment within income properties that we speak a lot about is a home, and we've all seen it, and we, we know family members and friends that, that have those type of properties, for example, being a, uh, a, a home, probably you know a, r right around transit again, uh, with two doors, and what we call two doors is something that uh, you can rent out the upstairs and the downstairs, so... You'll have two tenants. That's obviously a benefit uh, because if one tenant, for example, in the basement leaves, you still have the income that's coming in from the guys upstairs. Cash required to close essentially for a uh, income property is around one hundred and thirty-five to one hundred and fifty thousand in the Greater Toronto Area. One of the benefits is that it's a home, and we all know we're just there's no space anymore to really build out single-family homes, and so the the value long term will always be higher on a home than it will be in a condo because there's you get land, you get a backyard. There's it's more desirable. Period. One of the, 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 the uh, things that you want to consider, though, when it comes to income properties, uh, specifically with something with two doors and a home, is that you need to budget a little bit more now, right? Because you have a roof that you need to be concerned about, a furnace, windows. So there's obviously a little bit more that's involved uh, in terms of uh, uh, maintenance of the home. So that's definitely, if, if you're not handy or you're not comfortable with, with, with dealing with financials from, from, from keeping a like from a slush fund perspective, this is probably not something that you should be investing into. The last type, uh, type of investment option that I want to speak about is student housing. Student housing, uh, and I'm really going to speak more specifically about a purpose-built student housing opportunity. One of the biggest benefits and by far the most, um, the most cash, like the highest cash flow that you're going to receive in any investment is going to be from a, a student housing. 
generally they have four to five tenants in the one unit if it's uh, like let's call it a condo or a home and so the amount of cash flow that you're going to have is is going to be the highest from any one of the properties uh, property types the other thing is is that it's probably probably the most recession proof proof investment out there think about it as long as parents continue to send their kids to school there's always going to be tenants, especially in areas that have universities that are, 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 are ranked very high, i.e. University of Toronto. Uh, uh, you know, there's uh, the, the one area that we're really bullish on is Kitchener-Waterloo because there's two universities, uh, both uh, you have uh, University of uh, Waterloo and Laurier University. So you have two universities and a third college, Conestoga College. So th- you have a lot of students coming in. Um, a lot of foreign students as well. And so the, the, the pool of tenants is very, very strong. Things to consider that if you're not, ma- like if you don't have someone managing it for you, it can be pretty tough, as you can imagine, to deal with four to five students. And so again, if you're not going to be uh, having it managed by a, a uh, like a reputable management company, if you're going to manage it yourself, you definitely need to consider um, like h- how are you going to handle the calls at two o'clock in the morning, or you know there's there, there's a fight between the students, or there, the toilet breaks. Especially if you're not living in the area, that's something that you're going to need to consider. As always, guys, I hope this brought you uh, some value. At any time, give us a shout. Um, but always, please make sure. Nothing is guaranteed when you're investing into real estate and check and double check and triple check all the little intricacies that come from uh, investing into real estate. Um, at the end of the day, the biggest benefit, obviously, there's there, there's obviously triple benefits in investing real estate. Uh, values always go up. Rents always go up and mortgages are paid down. But again, there's things that you personally need to consider yourself. If you're, if you're someone who's working a lot, uh, you don't want to get into something that's an active investment. You want to you want to invest in passive. As always, guys, hope it brought you some value. Take care. This has been the REC Experience Podcast with Jazz Takar, an REC Canada production. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the REC experience. Please make sure to subscribe, like, and share. Click here to watch and experience more videos from REC.